as this is the first technical section in this course, we will start from the basics and just discuss how to create and run threads using the normal threads and executors. Now, whenever you want to create and run a thread in Java, the basic mechanism is always the same, no matter what API you use. You always need to do three things. Number one, you need to have an instance of thread class. Number two, you need to have an instance of runnable interface implementation that has to be provided to the thread class object. And number three, you need to call the start method on the thread object to start the thread as a separate sequence of execution inside the JVM. Now, let us first look at how to use the threads API. There are many techniques to create and run threads using the threads API. And all those techniques differ only in two ways. First, the way we create the thread class object and the runnable implementation. And second, how do we provide the runnable object to the thread class object so that a separate thread of execution could be spawned and the task could be executed in that. Let's write some code now and see the first technique for creating threads using the threads API. On your screen, you can see a skeleton of a class with an empty main method. A thread, by definition, drives a task in an independent flow of control. Therefore, we need two things, a task definition and a thread. For this example, we are going to create the task by extending the thread class. So I'm creating another class within the same class file here by the name of first task that extends the thread class. Thread in turn already implements a runnable interface. So we can override the run method in this class to provide the task definition to this thread. As part of the task definition, I'm just going to print a statement 10 times inside a loop. Now we need to call the start method of the thread class also in order to start the thread of execution. For this example, we are going to call the start method in the constructor of first task. So let us create a constructor here. This constructor will have just one line that calls the start method of this thread. With this code, as soon as we create an instance of the first task class, the start method of the thread class will be called from within its constructor. This will start the thread immediately. So let us create our first thread by creating an object of this class in the main method of the first technique class. I'm going to run this class as a Java application now. You see that there is also a shortcut Alt Shift X and J for running a Java application. The next time I'm going to use this shortcut so you won't see this pop-up menu again. The thread has run very fast. We could not even see it running. So let us introduce a small delay in the loop here so that we can witness the sysouts coming in the console one at a time. A delay of 250 milliseconds should be sufficient. The sleep method throws an interrupted exception which is a checked exception. So we need to surround it with a try catch block also. And let us put two sysouts in the main method also so that we can distinguish when the main thread starts and ends and when the spawn thread in which the first task executes starts and ends. Running it now. There, the output is a little slower this time and we can see the individual sysouts appearing in the console. From the output, we see that first the main thread started and then it spawned the second thread. And before the second thread could get the CPU to execute, the main thread had already ended. After that, the spawn thread executed and printed the countdown messages one by one. Now, what if we want to spawn a second thread as well? For that, we just have to create another object of the first task class. This will create a new task as well as a new thread and then start executing the task in that thread, similar to the first task object. And by the way, you can also capture the thread reference here while creating the instance of first task if you wish. If you capture the thread reference, then you can do all sorts of things with it later to control the thread of execution. 
you can rename the thread join it check if the thread is running or has finished etc we will cover all these things in detail in the subsequent tutorials coming back to the topic if we are running two tasks in parallel then we also need to identify from which of the two tasks each of the sysout logs in the console has come so we need to provide an identity to each task and print its identity information also along with the sysout messages to create the identities we can have a static variable that just counts the number of instances of the task class we also need a variable to actually hold the id of the task instance calling it id and then every time we create a new instance of the task we can increment the value of count by 1 and set that as the id of this instance so each new task instance will get a new id we need to update the task sysout to include this id as well running this class again now here again the main thread started first and then spawned the other two threads before any of these two threads could get the cpu cycles to run the main thread had already ended after that the two spawned threads ran and executed the tasks we see the interspersed output coming from both the tasks till they both completed successfully which is as expected in reality you do not know which thread is going to get the cpu when so you won't get the same output every time you run this program the output will be similar but not exactly the same so in this technique of creating and running threads the thread object and the runnable implementation both are provided by the same class in our example that class is first task in order to start the thread the start method is invoked from the constructor of this class itself so as soon as you create an instance of this class the thread also starts immediately this brings us to the end of this lesson see you in the next one